Hey there and welcome to the 20th video in my series on getting started with AutoCAD 2015. My name is Chris and in this video we're going to talk about XRefs and a couple applications of XRefs. Again, I'm using AutoCAD 2015. If you're not using it, things will look different on my screen than they will on your screen, but the functionality should be essentially the same. So let's go ahead and get kicked off into this. I went ahead and took the liberty of making a couple really quick drawings here. Oh, yay, yay. There we go. We have this one here, it's just kind of the shell of a building. We have this one here, which is a title block, a really basic title block, super crazy, crazy basic title block. And then we have another drawing here, which is going to act as kind of the model that we're gonna have everything else working into. Now what an external, uh, what an XREF is, it's an, it's an external reference to another file. So it's the ability to take a file and superimpose it into the file that you're working in. And this can be nested as, as deep as you want, given that you use the right settings. So let's go ahead and get jumped right into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this file here. This is the first thing I want you to remember is always save your files before you try an XREF. Otherwise you're gonna have a hell of a time. So let's go ahead and get this in here. We're just gonna call this model. We have this file saved now. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull up our XREF dialog. Um, I've actually got it pulled up right here, but if you type in XREF, let's go ahead and close it, type in XREF, and it comes. So right now you'll see the only file that's referenced in here is the actual file itself, model, right? Um, so let's go ahead and attach a, another file. And you'll notice here you've got all sorts of different types of files you can attach. You can attach a DWG, which is AutoCAD's native format. You can attach images, which can be like pings or GIFs or jpegs or bitmaps uh, i think you can do tiffs as well let's take a look all image files you know that's good enough good enough for them to say how it is now uh, you can get a dwf which is a digital plot um, from from AutoCAD, autocad you can get a dgn which is a drawing file from bentley microstation uh, you can attach pdfs uh, we're going to talk about pdfs in another video but um, you can attach PDFs and you can attach point clouds and I, I'm not going to worry about anything but DWGs for right now. So let's go ahead and select that we want to attach a DWG. We want to select the background and go ahead and click open. Now this dialog will come up and it will give us a couple different options. The first one here is we can scale the XREF. And I don't want to scale the XREF. I want it to stay exactly the way it is because it's drawing. It's it's one to one right now. We're going to be drawing on top of it one to one. We don't need to worry about scale. Uh, insertion point, I want to maintain the same insertion point as the background that I created, which was 0, 0, so I'm going to leave that the way it is. The, we don't need rotation, or this is just kind of an FYI, uh, the units. We can select how it's pathed, whether it's relative path, full path, or no path. I've never played around with no path, so if you want to play around with that and tell me what it does, it's great. Um, I always use relative path if I can. And the reason is, is because it means that your links between files aren't broken if your files get moved, as long as they stay in the same relation to each other uh, in terms of the file system. So if, if one's two folders up from the other one, as long as it stays two folders up, it doesn't matter where they are, they'll still find each other. And then the last thing here we have is the reference type. And you can have an attachment, which means that the file, the XREF is attached and any other files that, that the file that the XREF is attached to have, let me try that again. If you were to make another file and you were to attach this model file onto it, if we had used whether the attach method to bring the background in, the background would also show up in the new file as well as in the model file. Whereas if you select an overlay, it only shows up in the file that it's directly attached to. So there's no nesting of, of attachments if you use an attach if you use an overlay. We're gonna use attachment here, just leave it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And in comes our drawing here. You'll notice that the drawing is grayed out a little bit. And this is by design. If you go ahead and go back to your insert tab and you go to reference, you've got this um, XREF fading factor here. And you can set that up. The higher it is, the more faded it is, the lower it is, the less faded it is. It just makes it a little easier to be able to differentiate what is material in your drawing versus what is an XREF. 
Uh, and that, again, this, that's, that's most really relevant in when you're working with really large drawings. So, so let's go ahead and play with this XREF a little bit. You'll notice here um, the XREF is on layer zero because we only have that one layer right now. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer and call it XREF and I'm going to lock it. The reason why I'm locking the XREF layer, I'm going to go ahead and stick this on the XREF layer, is because in the event that I'm working with a whole bunch of content and I make a selection and I say, oh, I want to delete that, I don't accidentally delete my XREF. Or if I have a bunch of content and I say, oh, I want to move that, I don't accidentally move my, my XREF. Or same thing with copying. So making sure it's on a locked layer can be pretty critical when it comes to making sure that your data doesn't get monkeyed with by accident. So, so let's go ahead and look at the background and see how this works with each other. Now, when you load an XREF into a drawing, it's instanced. It's the way that it was when it was loaded. That link um, is there between files, but the files don't update unless you tell them to update or certain actions take place, um, specifically things like saving, things like opening a file. Um, I believe plotting also does it by default. There's a variable that lets you handle all of that. So let's say we want to go into our background and we want to make another wall here. We want to come out, we want to come out. 60 inches, go down 4 inches, come back over. We've got this file in here, and I'm going to go ahead and save it. And you'll notice we go to our model, and that's not updated yet. But we have this little balloon down here that says that we need to, up, that we need to reload our XRFs. Incidentally, if you look over here on the XRF panel, it will say it needs to be reloaded as well. So you can go ahead and select it and select Reload, or you can go ahead and click Reload Background. Either way, works just fine. You'll see that wall comes in just just fine. So now at this point, we can we can draw on top of this and say, well, these are this is my area drawing. So we want to get square footage of this. I can use a polyline. We can say blah blah blah. Give me the information on that. You can select it and you can get all your all your values. Right? You know this is this many square inches, this many square feet. And again, this is a completely separate and distinct drawing from, from this one. Just remember these two are, are completely separate. There are a couple different ways that you can modify your XRFs inside the drawing. First one is by selecting it and going open XRF, and that'll open it up just like this one here. Ah, come on, there we go. So it'll open up in an additional file if you happen to have that file closed and you need to modify the XRF, and let's say you need to modify it in relation to some elements that are in the drawing itself, you can also select open edit XRF in place. Um, this is a little more technical and you have to remember to close the reference when you're done working it, otherwise things can get a little wonky. The way that you do that is you select OK, go ahead and click OK, that's fine. You'll notice now we're in the XREF itself. So I'm going to just draw some geometry in here. Let's offset that in six inches just for fun. And But you'll see we're still in the model. Um, so in order to get back to this content here, which we currently can't access, um, you have to do you have to do a reference close. So ref close that's going to prompt you saying would you like to save your changes you say yes i want to save it go and click ok and your changes are saved and it pops up and and it just reloads the x ref and spot on the spot right there so those are a couple ways you can do it and again you can always do all of these functions from inside the the x ref dialog itself as well so if you select the XREF and you right click on it, you have all these different options. Um, you can always reload your XREF. Now if you want to turn off your XREF temporarily, you go ahead and select unload. You'll notice that it's still listed, but it's just not showing up. And if you want it back, you go ahead and select reload. 
If you want to get rid of it from the file altogether, if you want to remove the XREF, you select Detach. And if you want the XREF to no longer be an XREF, if you want it to be a part of that drawing, you select Bind. And that will bind the XREF to the drawing that you're working in, meaning that this file uh, that has just that information and the XREF will no longer have this XREF. It will have the information from this XREF in the file itself. So that can be really helpful if you are sending files out to people and you don't want to send out all your backgrounds to a big e-transmit or whatever. So let's talk about another application for for XREFs, and that is using them as a title block in a layout. So we've got this layout here. This is an eight and a half by eleven layout by default. And it's really nice to be able to control your title block single point without having to monkey with it all the time through a whole bunch of different sheets. Let's say you've got 10 sheets. It'd be a real pain in the neck to have to go to 10 sheets and change something on each sheet. So if you can change it once, that's a, that's a fantastic way to do it. And the way you can make that happen is with an XREF, where you have a single reference that is instanced throughout the, the different sheets, and you can kind of go from there. So let's go ahead and attach this other XREF here. I've got one here uh, called Title Block. It's super simple. It's a uh, a rectangle. It's eight and a half by eleven landscape, and another little rectangle that defines a one and a half inch boundary where you can put kind of information or whatever. So I'm going to save that. Just for kicks and giggles, we're going to go ahead and close it. And I'm going to go ahead and go here, and we're going to attach a DWG, and we're going to attach the Title Block and click open. Now. When you're attaching XREFs in, uh, in paper space, it gets a little different. And the reason is because in paper space, your, your origin, your 0, 0, 0,0 point is, it can be anywhere. It, it, its location is dependent on how the, the sheet was, the, the, the size of the sheet was set up. And, I've never found any rhyme or reason to this. It can be completely arbitrary at times. So we're going to go ahead and specify. You'll, you'll see kind of what I mean here. We're sticking at 0, 0, and you'd expect 0, 0 to be this corner point here. But we go ahead and click OK, and it sticks it in. And you can see that's our 0, 0 right there. And then again, it's completely dependent on the the the, um, the sheet type that you're working with. So there's no universal zero comma zero with paper space. It's one of my big gripes, but I've never fixed it. So this is the one time I'm gonna tell you to eyeball it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna select your, your title block and just kind of zoom in as close as you can on this corner and make it look like it's right. And again, this this is the one thing where I'd say eyeball it. And the reason is because when you go to plot, you're not gonna notice that fraction of a fraction of a fraction of an inch off that you are. It'll plot just fine. So now we have our title block in here. And if we go ahead and we can say, okay, I'm gonna make my viewport, take it there, take it there. And it's gonna come up. Uh, turn ortho on 0.25 inches. It's going to come down 0.25 inches. It's going to come over 0.25 inches. And it's going to come all the way over to here and back 0.25 inches. So we have this basic sheet set up, what we can do is we can select the uh, the XREF and the viewport, and we're going to use uh, what's called a copy with a base point. It's Control Shift C on your keyboard. You pick the base point. In this case, I'm just going to say 0, 0, because we know exactly where 0, 0 is in the next layout because they use the same uh, page paper type, right? So if we go here, I say, okay, I'm going to delete everything. And I'm going to go ahead and paste, Control-V to paste. 
we can type 0 comma 0 again and it'll pop it in exactly where it's supposed to be and now what you can do is you can go in and you can say well we've got our layers now and I know that I don't want the XREF to show up on this one so I'm going to freeze it in the viewport and on this sheet it doesn't show up but on this sheet it does so that is a very basic rundown of XREFs and kind of how they're used um, some of the applications that you'll use XREFs in are for coordinating various disciplines in a project. So let's say you're working in an architectural project, you have a mechanical engineer, you have an electrical engineer, you have, um, in my case, I work for a lighting design firms, so and we have a lighting design firm, you have the architect himself, you have um, who some some number of other people, you might have a landscape architect or an interior designer, and, and they all have their own files. and in order to, to coordinate them, you would take the the architectural files and you would superimpose everybody else's information on the architectural files. And then you can turn off layers that you don't want on on different sheets or whatever. So uh, that's that's a fantastic way of being able to split the work up in a drawing and be able to still coordinate your efforts with each other. So that is it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you thought this video was good, go ahead and like or share or positive things with this video. If you thought this video was life-changing, go ahead and subscribe and I will bring you more of them and I will see you in the next video.